Today is a very special morning. Today is the day that we get to go to a very special event in San Juan del Sur, just north of San Juan del Sur. There is a group of people from all around the world coming together to talk about regenerative and sustainable construction processes. And it just so happens RadPad gets to go. So I get to go for three days, two full days of conferences from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're gonna get a stream, a lot of it live on the RadPad uh, Facebook and I'll put some on my own personal too because it's definitely personal and business. Um, but we're about to head off on a motorbike and cruise down to the beach in, it's in a place just outside of, San, uh, north of San Juan del Sur, um, just north of Mahiwal Beach it's called Morgan's Rock. It's an eco-reserve um, hotel. It's, it's amazing. There's bungalows all up on the hills, and we're going to stay there for two days while we're with some of the smartest people in the world talking about regenerative and uh, sustainable construction processes. So let's go. We made it from Rivas to San Juan del Sur, kinda. We took the back road, which is called the Chacalata. It's a dirt road that connects from the back of Rivas into the back of San Juan del Sur. Before we got to San Juan, we pulled off for a beach called Mahiwal Beach. And on our way there, we pulled into the Morgan's Rock Eco Resort. It is amazing. There's so much here. We're so excited to figure out what the heck we're doing here, but we're gonna meet with some amazing people. We're gonna go find Arnold and see what it is that we're doing right now. All right, we made it. I'm here with Arnold. Hello, hello. Arnold, uh, I'm stoked to be here. Glad you're here, man. You seem pretty yeah. stoked to be here. I'm so happy to be here. It's always, amazing. Yeah. always. I would amazing. live here if I could. Oh. <laughs> so we're at Morgan's Rock, is that? Yes, yeah. it's the Ocotal Bay. Okay. It's the Ocotal Bay, where Morgan's Rock was built almost 20 years ago. Okay. And uh, a million and a half trees planted on the property too. Wow. Conservation hey, areas. And I had a question about it. How big is it in hectares? 2,000. 
2,000 hectares. Roughly. So, 3, I, was a little, acres. I said 23,000. <laughs> no. I was a little off in the hectares. So, yeah. just we're to not clarify. in Texas, we're in yeah. Nicaragua. <laughs> right on. So, 2,000 plus hectares. Yeah. Still a big area that's pretty uninhabited. Well, it was, when we bought it, it was, it was, it had a lot of uh, cattle, cattle land. But right. after 30 years almost, uh, if you go to the highest of the property, it's, it's covered with trees and, yeah. and lush. And uh, we've done a lot of conservation efforts here. We have a private reserve on the, on the beachfront, 350 acres of private reserve. Yeah. About 800 hectares of plantations, and then the rest is just forest tropical dry forest that yeah. we're protecting. So just because the ocean is behind me, I've heard a little bit. I don't know very much about it, uh -huh. but some what's going on out here? There's some waves. Yeah, yeah there, there are waves for sure. <laughs> the south is blowing, so it's it's pretty it's But pretty part rough. of your part of your mission here is to to bring back like fish, is that right? Yeah, we're, we're doing a, a whole program on regeneration. Uh -huh. uh, it's a big movement. It, the whole idea is that we've passed the, the point, the inflection point of conservation. Conservation is protecting what exists. Regeneration is regenerating what is gone. So we're trying to do a lot of efforts to regenerate a land and ocean okay. with, um, with different systems that a, we're starting to implement in the, in the property. Right. And, is there uh, anything you can tell me about a system that's going on with the ocean? Is there anything in there? We're, we're uh, starting a, an artificial reef program okay. uh, where you basically drop reefs that create protected spaces for fish, for lobster. Algae start growing in it. You can attach corals to it and it becomes like a coral structure. And, and basically when fish have more protection, they reproduce better. Your yields of reproduction are higher for most fish, for fish, crustaceans, uh, so you basically create an ecosystem, restore an ecosystem, and, and in the sea things go fast. Right. Uh, really you could, in two, three years you could repopulate some areas, wow. it, it goes that fast. Fantastic. Uh, so we're doing a lot of effort in that and our goal is to restore populations of crustaceans, some mollusks that are now gone, almost like Piriacha, like Katana, they're species that have been overfished. And uh, with a little bit of technology and knowledge, you can actually restore those populations and regenerate the waters. Yeah. And then our whole goal is that everything we're doing here is to transfer technology to local communities so they learn how to be more regenerative, not sustainable, regenerative. Right. Um, in, in fish populations, one simple thing they can do is just don't kill the females. You know, females have thousands of millions of eggs, sometimes depending on the species. And by just fishing males, you could restore populations very fast. Okay. A, and you usually need one male for a few females, like most animals. So a, there's techniques like that that are very simple. There's techniques that are more complex. That's where we're planning to build a, a biomarine center to do a more research on certain of the most complex species and we're going to have aquaponic systems mixing fish and crustaceans with vegetable and legume productions yeah uh, we're already producing um, we're using the waste of the hotel and the houses and the farm for black soldier fly larva production and then we feed those larvae to the chickens and i saw also, that just like from what i saw was like just a refined system that was scalable yeah. like when you said you were doing it, I've seen people do it with like the the blue buckets and stuff and and that's uh, you know it seems like yeah that works yeah but those trays man what the the, the whole idea is to to make it a bit more scientific and more precise yeah so we've been measuring how much waste average we're creating we're trying to feed the larva that we can feed with a sustainable food source and then depending on the amount of lava we can produce we're trying to match that capacity with the chickens we can grow and then the cool thing is that this system start connecting with each other because the larva actually the waste of the larva is great organic matter and now we're starting vegetable farms and herb farms and all these things with the with the compost and then 
the leftovers of those same vegetables are fed back it's just into like the larva. Around and around so and around. You, it's just like nature. Nature has no waste. It uses everything. Yeah. But you need a lot of different systems that collaborate amongst each other and to, to get complement. the right amount. You don't and want too much of this or too little of that. Tra traditional agriculture, what it try to do is extrapolate one species and try to mass produce that species but it creates unsustainable systems because you don't have all the other systems around it. Whilst if you create biodiversity and you have multiple systems, then they build on each other. Right. And you save a lot of money on chemicals and, you know, All the stuff you don't want anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So all we're right. trying to do everything organic. There was something else. Can we talk about iguanas? Yeah, we're doing a, a iguana iguana farm a yeah. project we have one of our managers that already has an iguana farm we've run some initial trials and the whole idea is to try to change the mindset of people that just go and extract iguanas especially during the the uh, semana santa it's uh, easter week there's a very traditional dish called iguana and pinol where they're used to cook the iguana with the eggs in a dish that you eat the iguana and the eggs in the iguana. So before Semana Santa, you have hundreds of poachers that go by and they take the iguana. We've been protecting iguanas for 20 years and, and it's, it's a never ending. So instead of fighting, you know, a tradition and fighting local communities, you actually teach them how to grow iguanas. So the whole idea is that the iguana they're going to kill or sell. Instead of doing that, they take the eggs they farm them and now they have you know 30 or 40 iguanas that they can do so they're overproducing and then they consume if they want because it's a local tradition the iguanas without affecting you know the local population actually restoring so that's another example of how you know with the right management you can regenerate systems yeah nature has abundance all over the place we just haven't been smart enough to a uh, you know pull from that abundance so that's what we're trying to do here it's it's basically a an innovation incubation technology platform of nature-based solutions where we can showcase all this regenerative systems uh, so people can come and learn from them and then replicate at home or replicate in their community um, that's really the goal of, of the project right so what we came for it, from RadPad is kind of basically we have that framing system mm -hmm. which uh, might be of value and yeah. um, you've invited a bunch of other people here that have other things that might be able to collaborate yeah. and basically the end goal is to collaborate or is it absolutely is it? you know the, the project the macro project we're doing is a regenerative community called Ubuntu and Ubuntu is that spirit of collaboration where none of us can extrapolate ourselves from our community. We're the result and our, all of our achievements are, you know, in part of a result of the collective achievements. So the spirit of everything we're doing at Ubuntu is how can we collaborate with people? We all bring different parts of the equation and by collaborating we, ha we can actually complement each other. So we've created committees for every pillar that we're working on natural construction system and affordable construction system is, is an important pillar because we want to create construction systems that are not only sustainable but also sustainable in the long term. And that's where, you know, extremes are not always the best. You, you need to combine the best of different materials and come up with solutions that are both sustainable from an environmental point of view but also sustainable from an economic and durability point of view. So I think, you know, I've been building in wood for years, but I think metal for structures is actually quite sustainable because it'll last a lot longer and you don't have to deal with termites or we live in environments that are very harsh. You have salt, you have sun, you have mold, you have uh, termites. So, so uh, some, some radicals think metal is, is, you know, it's not natural, but the reality, if you combine it with natural materials, you can achieve a product that is fairly, um, you know, sustainable from a natural material point of view, but also 100% sustainable because the structure will stay for a lot longer in place. So the longevity of it longevity is as of it, a value when you're and, looking at. And also, you know, a, a, 
longevity means uh, less maintenance. It means less hassles. Right. And uh, affordable housing and social housing is in our equation an important portion of the of the of the model. So we want to create housing solutions for for people that work in the community, for people that live in the community, for local communities, and and practicality and speed of construction and it's fundamental. So so I think um, combining materials, it's what nature does. You know, it's it's just bringing different systems. So our goal is to be able to combine, you know, construction materials that are easily available, like metal, and then add a lot of the natural construction materials that we have uh, widely available, also locally, so, like wood, like natural fibers, uh, sugar, sugar cane, um, uh, limestone, uh, bamboo can be integrated into the equation. Uh, there's a lot of natural fibers in our environment that we can use. So you could achieve a very organic look and use, you know, a big percentage of natural materials. And, and I've, I've been building with wood for 20 years. And the issue with wood structures is that in these harsh environments, if you don't have a sophisticated treatment system, you could have issues in, in the long term with mold or insects attacking the structure. And if your structure is attacked, it becomes a big issue. You need to deconstruct the house to fix the structure. So I've come to the conclusion that metal is actually a quite a, a good solution. And, and that's where we're talking to, you know, different solution makers. We have, you know, and, and also the design component, make things look good. They don't need to be expensive to look good. So we got, you know, architects from Gensler. We got expert architects in wood construction. We got natural wall systems with hempcrete, bagacrete, ricecrete. Uh, coming into to this session um, but we also have you know metal structures like like rack pad because I truly believe that that we all bring a different uh, you know complement to the it's like a puzzle you know every one of us has a puzzle and what we need to do is collaborate to make the puzzle much nicer and much bigger right uh, we're studying mycelium insulation That's what I'm really excited yeah. about that because I love the idea. I mean, it's far-fetched idea, but to be able to... Can you explain what my... It's not is? so far. It's actually... There, there's a lot of construction happening. A lot of companies around the world are already doing it. Yeah. And basically use natural ways to grow mycelium. Mycelium is the root system of a mushroom. Mushroom is the fruit of the mycelium. So mycelium is... It's a root system that is very tight altogether. And you can create insulation panels, there's some people actually uh, creating structural blocks now with mycelium and yeah. all you need is natural fiber. You inoculate it with mycelium, three, four days later, you have a block or a panel that you can build with. Yeah. And it's very insulating for, you know, this sort of environment, hot, cold. It's a natural breathing uh, uh, material and you can make all all sorts of stuff with it. You can make not only construction materials, but you can make lamps, you can make furniture, you can make vases, you can you can mold it into anything. Wow. Uh, so it's it's a pretty cool material. We're, we're deeply looking into it. Yeah, I'm excited to get, get involved with all these guys. I feel like it's so special to be part of this, man. It's <laughs> like, because I'm, you know, the basic guy, man. I got posts going here and there. You have nothing basic. And You're an entrepreneur. <laughs> you sort out shit. Yeah. You're, you're creative uh, and I think that has a lot of value and that's why I wanted to invite you because I believe what you're doing is is unique it's smart it's um, it's a great complement uh, to what we're trying to achieve well thank you so, very much man I'm, I'm thank so you so happy you're here man yeah I'm stoked <laughs> to be here I can't wait to meet everybody and yeah. just start openly discussing here's all of our stuff how that's can it. we make the best that's out of it, it. Yeah. that's it and you know, instead of competing and trying to hold our own solutions, you know, very, it, 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 there's always something better that arises from collaboration. Absolutely. Rather than competition. Yeah. And we've lost that. We've yeah. become very individualistic society. And I think we're all, you know, looking to connect more in community. And that goes from a friendship and neighborhood level to to a business level. Totally. You know, we, we need to understand that 
nobody's competing. We're all creating solutions for humanity that are smarter if we, you know, combine our solutions. So right. that's that's the spirit. That's the idea. I believe it. You know, I got a little tattoo here. I am because we are. I think that is the definition. <laughs> <laughs> that right is the definition of Ubuntu. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, sure. man. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get started. <laughs>